Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness, and I am here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. This is episode 310, DIY Updates for Under $100 that are Game Changers. And the show notes for today's episode, you can find at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 310. I love a DIY that you can do sort of on the cheap. I mean, this, some of them are way under 100 bucks too. That can really change up a room. Well, and these are mostly easy things because if it's a simple DIY, I might try it. But a lot of them are so complicated. I'm thinking there's no way I'm even going to, I mean, there's no way I can do that. So. And you are comfortable around power tools too. So I'm not sure. Well, I it think has to that be- your level of DIY might be a little more advanced than you're admitting. Well, it has to be something I can do by myself too, because nobody at my house likes to help me. I mean, if there's any clanking of the toolbox, it's like everyone is hi- hide. <laughs> they, <laughs> they run, run and cover. hide. No yeah. one, mm-mm. no one yeah. even answers if I'm calling. Yes, I have the same experience here. But it is, it is really satisfying to be able to do something mm-hmm. yourself. But yeah, these are pretty easy ones that. You know, you should be able to do it in an hour or certainly in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was actually trying to hang. Remember the wall hanging I was talking about getting in a previous oh, yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah. And it came and I tried to hang it above my bed by myself. Uh huh. I broke, I stepped, I was on the bed trying to hang it above the bed. I stepped on a, uh, my uh, yardstick, broke that, uh, <laughs> two lamps fell. Oh, no. And um, and then it ended up being four inches wider than I thought it was going to be, and it's not going to work there. But so anyway, so that is you know that sort of thing happens too. Oh, but it's going to work somewhere, right? Because it's so it's pretty. working somewhere. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that because it's not returnable because it was beautiful. on sale. So yep, no, I'm going to make it work. Yeah, I, well, it's lovely. So I'm sure you will. But yeah, isn't that funny? I wish we lived closer because then I could have come over and <laughs> jumped on the bed with you and held up the other end, and, and I would have made you do it too. I know you would have. <laughs> And I would have taken my shoes off, of course. Of course. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. Um, there's one that I am going to do. I already have the pretty corbels. I am going to put a shelf with some corbels over a doorway in ah. my hallway. And I've been talking about doing this and I just haven't gotten to it. And boy, this is lighting the fire under me. I think that is such a really simple way to upgrade and give some dimension to you know, sometimes just a straight hallway needs a little something, which is in my case, or you just feel like that the side of the room needs something. And it's really easy to add a shelf over a door frame because nine times out of 10, you're going to have molding around it anyway. So you already have like a little bit of area for the the horizontal piece of wood to rest on. And then you can buy beautiful corbels. You could go vintage. You could even pick up some at Home Depot. They have really nice ones there actually. Or you could do metal ones. And then you can put some pretty things up there. You could lean them or just, you know, display them in vignette style. I think it could be beautiful. Even books Mm -hmm. could be good. Oh yeah. Well, I forgot to mention a second ago when I was talking about the wall hanging, that did you see the email from Koki? Oh, so pretty. She had bought a similar wall hanging from Wisteria and sent us a picture of it in her hallway. And it was beautiful. So thank you for sending that. I forgot to mention that earlier. No, and I loved I loved seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Koki. That was really fun. And I, hers is very large. Is yours that big? Yes. <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> it's really, that's, the, that's why you cannot do it by yourself. Yeah, that's the problem. But yeah, anyway, we but, talked about that in the What We're mm-hmm. Crushing On episode, I believe. If anybody's yes. wanting to, to see that, head back to that episode. And we could even link it in the show notes here so you mm-hmm. can have a look. Yeah. And what you were saying, now, didn't you put a shelf above in your kitchen, above the door in your kitchen? I was thinking you had already done a shelf above one of your doors. No. Oh, your yeah, wall. yeah. I have a shelf, mm-hmm. a very In long ki- shelf right. above the kitchen, the, above the those factory metal doors. And it's very narrow and it has corbels. And you have uh, some white uh, ironstone up there if I remember I do. Correctly. That's where I have my my yeah. little white creamer slash pitcher collection running across there. And that makes – it makes all the difference. I just needed something there and I wasn't going to put window treatments on those doors. And I didn't want to put anything that was really going to compete with them. But I wanted to some, some interest up there. And the white on white just does the trick. 
there's something there, but it's not mm-hmm. distra- distracting when it's you look beautiful. at the doors. Well, I want to add uh, an an additional idea for this corbels above a doorway, and that is just to put a corbels and a piece of wood in a hallway for a shelf, which I did that in our upstairs and it looks fantastic. So, or I think it looks pretty good. So, you know, if you add the antique corbels, you can put a piece of wood on it and make it into a shelf and put it really anywhere in your house. Right. And yours doesn't, it sort of acts like a console table. Yes. Yes. Because it's a, I used, um, oh, it's probably about 10 inches deep piece of wood. So yeah, so you can do it kind of narrow or deeper, really whatever you want. And if you have a hallway that is narrow, this is a great way to have a place where you can display things. It does not require any kind of footprint on the floor. Yeah, I think that's a really great idea. Another thing that doesn't take up a lot of room is putting, and I've done this, ask Peter, putting a small home office inside a closet. I, you've done that? I love that idea. We did that in our house. I mean, I would recommend- This house or the one before? No, the one in Southampton. And okay. this, so this was years ago and we, it was a small size house and we had a guest room and at that point we didn't have any kids. So it was, you know, sort of a catch-all room and people could sleep there and stuff. But the, we didn't need all that closet space. Um, so it was the bifold kind of louver door closets, very traditional kind of closet doors. And so it opened up to a pretty wide area, but it wasn't very deep. So I just had a piece of wood, like probably was only about 12 to 16 inches wide, put in there. I don't remember. I don't think I went to the extent of having nice corbels or something. I just went wall to wall. I don't think you have to. No. And so then the chair could pull right up. And there were... uh, there were outlets inside of there, which was just fortuitous. And it was really, but Peter will, I, I can't live it down. Like he'll always joke about, well, the time I put, made him stay in the closet or, you know, I wouldn't let him out of the closet. You know, you can imagine all the jokes, but it was great, you know, and it wasn't an office that he would be working in every day at that point. And I think he was, oh, this know, was for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you did put him in the closet. <laughs> I thought you just meant when you were building it, but this really was his. No, it really was. And so oh, okay. I, I oh, did funny. again. It was another way also to hide the wires because oh, we even had more yeah. wires then mm-hmm, because there mm-hmm. wasn't even the illusion of wireless. No, then. because your your printer had to be connected directly yes. to your computer. All that yes. stuff. Back so in the I old thought, old days. I don't want to see all that. And when I have company and I invite them to stay in this guest room on an occasion on a weekend, I don't want them to see all that. So the so doors you closed. Just shut. Yes, oh, you stop just, it. The doors never change. You know, I didn't do anything to the doors. They were just the closet doors that sort of, you know, they bifold. And so they well, just- weren't, you, weren't yeah. you clever? I mean, I had never heard about this until maybe a few years ago. So good for you. I mean, that was quite a few years ago that you did that. I'm going to say- You were a trend maker. That was circa 1996. Oh my. Oh, wow. And you know what you'll get bonus points for? What? If you have a picture. Oh, I might. I might, but it's certainly not going to be on my phone. <laughs> not this phone. I, I might have pictures. If I can find one, I will. I, I would I don't know. love that will, to see a picture that. That will have to be a rainy weekend where I go through my photo album. So I don't know when that's going to happen. But okay. yeah, it was it was great. So I definitely suggest that to anybody. Um, you know, he wasn't in the closet when he was working there because the chair would, you know, would, if you, a human body well, was sitting in the chair, his knees were in out. the closet. His Let's knees be were real in the about this. And maybe an elbow or two. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. anyway, I think that's And then that was idea. when the, the computer monitors were three feet thick. Right. Right. <laughs> so exactly. yeah, that was a different day. Well, so, um, but you can do that mm-hmm. in an afternoon. Yeah. Well, and this is perfect for a closet where it's a little bit wider opening, I think. Exactly. Versus the one door. Because then you can do, oh, you have more room for the shelves and everything. I think it's a fabulous idea. Uh, I love the idea. And I've even seen it done into a little reading nook where people have put in a built-in bench to sit on and then shelves Mm -hmm. above to put the books on. Oh, wow. There's a lot of things you can do with that. A DIY that I have done myself, because this one's a pretty small, easy thing, that can be done by yourself. And that is the key. I can only do things that I have to do by myself. And that is to take those strings off of the attic stairs from, you know, the attic stairs and your ceiling, you have the long string on them. Uh Uh-huh. 
Well, it's not really sightly to see that string hanging down in your house. So I took all of those off and I put in a big, um, I guess that's called an eye screw Mm -hmm. uh, or an eye hook, excuse me, an eye hook. So it's round, okay, but it's big. And then you get, um, it's like a broom handle, but you buy a piece of wood at the hardware store that's kind of like a broom handle, but you know. I don't know, five, six feet long, Mm -hmm. and then just put, screw in a hook on one end. And then you use that to pull down the uh, stair ladder when you need it and push it back up. And then you put that uh, hook thing on the broom handle, basically, in your closet when you don't need it. Wow. That's impressive. I cannot believe you are talking about pull down stairs. Why? Because I was sitting in Laura's my daughter's sort of homework room. She has a small bedroom and then there was this actual little room. So she got to have that room too. Um, and I was sitting there the other day cause we were changing some things on the wall and she has access to an attic that is unfinished in our house. And you would have to stand on a ladder and push up, you know, and then like move the piece of wood over. Like there is no attic staircase right now. Oh, okay. But I was thinking to myself, because I always like to use every square inch of the houses I'm in. What if I made that opening a bigger rectangle and we put in one of those pull down stairs and I sheetrocked it up there? She could use that for sleepovers and stuff. Oh, I love that. I mean, it's idea. all pitched and everything. Oh my goodness. Okay, what a so great this idea. is this is off the DIY updates for under a hundred bucks. But I just couldn't believe yeah. that you said yeah. the pull down stairs. I haven't thought about pull down stairs and I you know, I can't even remember the last time I thought about them. And just it must have been two days ago. I was sitting up there and I thought, I never really considered that. Maybe we could use that space. Oh yeah. Well, our neighbors out at the in Round Top. They did that to their old antique farmhouse, and it's just kind of a it's it's just like a little stairway that I think there's a door to it in their bedroom, and then mm-hmm. it's up to the attic mm-hmm. where it's just kind of a sleeping loft for the grandkids when they come visit them. So cute. Well, this you would have to pull it down, like you're saying, from the ceiling, mm-hmm. right? The, the, yeah, but the- if you're if you're 16, you love that. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Could be fun. So anyway, that's funny that you mentioned those. I I mean, my mom would not be happy about that, but I think her friends will be. Right. Exactly. And I was like, somebody must sell those things, those pull down stairs. I'll have to look into that. Oh, they definitely do. They definitely do. Okay. Here's one that you might not be able to do on your own unless you can miter some corners, Mm -hmm. but- this a miter made, saw, super easy. Okay. So see, you're better at this than you <laughs> want to admit. Big shot. Go tie on your tool belt. I hear some things jingling around. You have your, <laughs> you're wearing your tool belt. Um, okay. So this, I did this in my house. When I say I did this, I came up with the idea and somebody executed it for me. So uh, to cover your return vents in a much prettier way than just having those metal slats. Oh, things. I've got to replace those things. They're so, so ugly. Yeah, they're ugly. Um, and they're probably not all that efficient either. Um, so what I did was I bought what would be called like radiator screen. I think, you, I think you've sh- shared that before and it is, they're beautiful. I did. I did. I did share this before, but not in this detail. So you get the, you can get, I got mine at Home Depot, but you could probably get them anywhere and they come in certain size sheets. So you may even be able to get a sheet that fits perfectly. And then you just simply make a frame for it. And then it gets with, screwed in with four screws. So, you know, if you ever had to take it off, they just you just take the screws off. It's not a problem. It's not a big deal. What a difference. Because I, mine is very visible. I have. Did you do this yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did this when we were doing the renovation. I came up with this idea. Because oh. I was. it was really, mm-hmm. you know, uh, having a budget sometimes makes you more creative, which yeah. I, I like. That's really the mm-hmm. only thing I like mm-hmm. about a budget. And so I was looking at these registers and the return vents and how expensive they all were, even for the small size. And for return vents, normally they're rather large. And I thought, how can I, how can I get around this? Because I don't want to spend this amount of money. And mine had to be custom because, you know, it's old and it was mm-hmm. just not going to be mm-hmm. a stock size. So it was going to be like $600 per. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want that. And then I really knew I also didn't want the ones that I thought were not that attractive. So yeah. I, I think I saw the this mesh material, this metal mesh uh, radiator material 
first. And then I thought, oh, yes, I can use that for that. So that's how that idea came to be. So since then, my HVAC guy has told other clients and he has made them for them too. So uh, I'm spreading that idea around my neighborhood and now to you guys. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I so it's love not expensive one. at all, but in, you know, unless you can make a frame yourself, you'd probably have to ask somebody or hire someone to do that. But it's you know, just a few pieces. Well, but of wood. it's not just the wood. But then you have to, you know, glue it together. That's the yeah. You have, you have, to, have to get it. You have to make it stay mm-hmm. together. And then you, he, I think he just used very um, either. A, I think heavy duty. Got to have the clamps. Yeah, or yeah. staples. I don't have one of those staple gun things. So. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, well but great idea. Your, your so Christmas here's an list. here's an idea too is to mm-hmm. add a chandelier to your laundry room. You know, we love chandeliers everywhere. Now you need to do wiring or hire an electrician to change it out if you have a light fixture there. Or you could do what I did and just put a candle chandelier or a candelier in there in your laundry room just for fun. I really don't like the candles, but it just looks real pretty in there. That's so pretty. So you have um, canned lights in there too? And then you just right. have- I have real lights and then I have the chandelier that just has candles in it that I don't right. really Right. So but when you say real lights, they're ceiling lights? Yeah. Yeah. They're just can lights. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't want a light fixture that's hanging down and the candle chandelier. Right. So I have the can lights. So they're not competing with the chandelier. Right. But that's so, mm-hmm. but, but I'm just to the point that you have a lot of illumination and you just have that for decor. And that's so fun. It yes. kind of like, why not have something fun and pretty? I have a chandelier in my laundry room too. But yeah, mine just is be the careful only when source of light. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just be careful when you're swinging that ironing board around and everything. You don't want to whack it. Well, I don't iron very much, but I, when I <laughs> flick the towels every once in a while, I get a big, you know, like it sounds like a giant wind chime. Yeah. You got to be careful. Okay, here's another one. New knobs. So oh, yeah. simple, inexpensive, unless you need to drill the hole. It's probably it's more than likely you're just replacing them, so you simply unscrew them and screw in the ones that you want. Um can make such a difference. And even if you're doing your whole kitchen, if you're smart about purchasing them or you're willing to even uh, take the ones off that you have and then spray paint them and change the color. That way you could do it really for nothing almost, just a can of spray paint. Oh, yeah. And let's say you wanted some open shelving in your kitchen. You can take those doors off those cabinets and make sure they're painted nicely to match your your kitchen. That's certainly something you can do for a different look. Although I don't really see people doing that much anymore, but that's I have seen it done. Well, I think that was in the, when everyone was questing to have the open shelving. Yes. Because they yes. really wanted it and they were thinking, mm-hmm. how can I do this? Oh, let me just take that off. And, you know, and some people could really make it work. A fun thing to do if you're doing that, but even moreover, if you have a older cabinet or dare I say a hutch or a china cabinet or something that needs a little updating, you could paint the back of it. You could wallpaper the back mm-hmm. of it. You could mm-hmm. try some of that re positional wallpaper that's all the rage and really update the look of something, you know, in an hour or two. Yeah. Okay. How about something as simple as adding a new front doormat? I guess it's not a DIY, but. Well, it really depends on your just, skill you know, level. That right. could be a DIY. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just throw that I out I did it myself. I, I mm-hmm. picked that up and I put mm-hmm. the other one down. I'm done. Well, I saw the idea to actually use tape on your front porch and tape off a design and paint on a front doormat. And then I thought, well, why wouldn't you just buy a new doormat and put it there? Yeah. So I thought, oh, let's just make this easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, talking about taking up carpeting, take the carpet off your stairs. I love that idea. I, you know, I think a lot of stair carpet, well, it gets a lot of use, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yes. go up and down a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a lot of it just doesn't look so good anymore. Have a good look. If yours is in that department, maybe just take it up. I mean, you, depending on what you have underneath there, it could be pretty inexpensive way to go. Don't replace it. Have Remove it. It would probably be kind of really fun. I love kind of that kind of like, you know, DIY, like, the like oh, you want look? me to take that wall down? Let me smash <laughs> it. Like, just imagine, like, you don't like the carpet and you just start pulling it and it starts coming off. How fun would that be? And then 
be ready with some fresh paint. I love a black and white staircase, but you could paint oh, it a fun color. Too. You've, I'm sure everybody's mm-hmm. seen on Pinterest how they do the risers in different colors, mm-hmm. even ombre, or you mm-hmm. could again put some wallpaper on there, you know, depending Stencils, on how many stairs you yeah. had. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. could be such a fun little accent spot. Right. And it may end up looking rather rustic once you pull up the carpet. But you can use some wood filler, some caulk to fill it in before you paint it. And uh, I think it can even look really beautiful, even with a rustic feel to it. So I'm all for this idea. And a lot of times the carpeted stairs, I mean, it's not really something that um, people are doing these days. But of course, most of the older homes have that already in there. So I think that's an easy way to update your home without spending a lot of money. Yeah. And just even if it's but it but if you paid someone it's probably going to cost more than $100. But if you did it yourself, I think you could do this for less than 100. Yeah, oh yeah, I think I think you definitely could. Um and also just having carpet like that. You know, when we were talking about detoxing your home and stuff, I think you know, if it's really seen better days, it's probably a good idea to get it out of there. Even if you don't have a lot of allergy sufferers and whatnot in your home. I mean, if it's been around for a long time, you know, and you don't have it regularly cleaned, you know, maybe it's time for it to go. Consider it anyway. I think you so. Know, How about painting your front door? Yeah. That's a good and, one. Yeah, and if you don't, if it's not if it's sustained wood door instead of a painted door. Another thing you can do is use the Howard Sunshield wood conditioner. That's something that I've used uh, that really does a nice job and we'll link to it uh, to just condition the wood and kind of protect it from the sun. In fact, it's time for me to do that again. But that's a great way to just kind of freshen your door or the the coat of paint I think is a great idea too. And as we're sort of approaching the spring, it would be fun to paint it, uh, you know, just like a pop color. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you have to do it when it's nice weather because you really want to leave your door open for a couple of hours while oh, the paint yeah, dries yeah. on the but edges. It, mm-hmm. Yes, for sure. But I'm just saying like, you know, like the whole spring cleaning, yeah, like I'm just picturing like, so. oh, wouldn't it be great? Like I would love to paint my door pink. Like I, I probably won't. I know I won't. But, you know, it just, it would be fun. So if you're in the mood for something different, maybe consider doing something new in your front door or a bright yellow or something like that. It'd be so fun. Yeah, I love all those ideas. And while you're outside changing your doormat with your DIY and maybe painting your front door, how about new house numbers? Or if you don't have house numbers, get some house numbers. They're so great now. Oh, I love that idea. Or maybe a new, actually, before I went with a ring doorbell, I picked out a really pretty doorknob that was craftsman style uh, that went with our the doorbell, you know, mm-hmm. the doorbell that went, you know, went with the style of our house. Uh, they're so pretty. Uh, if you go to some of these vintage places to get uh, a doorbells, they're they're really pretty. So you can do that as well. And I love the idea of the new uh, uh, changing out the your street numbers on your house. Or if you have a mailbox on your front porch, uh, you can change that out pretty easily. You know, uh, I do love the ring. And it has come in handy and I, I like the security of it and all of that. It's good stuff. But at our other house, which was much more of a storybook style house, kind of looked like, you know, the seven dwarfs might walk out of it in the mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I put a little bell because we did not have a door no- a doorbell. Oh. And so I just, I found this little bell at some little decor shop and it had like a little bird on it. I mean, it was super sweet, but it really went with the house and it, People and that was your doorbell? Have, yeah. And they would so ring the bell. So not only did I mean, everyone some, in the house hear it, but everyone on your street then probably heard well, it. Well, it was a nice it. bell. You know, yeah, it was yeah, like, a, sure you know, it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of a, like a sweet little bell. It was very nice. I mean, was, you know, sometimes people didn't know what they were supposed to do, whether it was just for looks or, but all, my girls were little then. And so all their little friends, when they would come call for them, I'd be like, ring, 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 ring. They definitely got used out of it. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. 
From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. The um, molding around any of your doorways in your house. If you are comfortable around some miter saws and things like that, you can probably do it yourself. But if you can get someone or someone in your home to help you, the uh, materials are not going to cost you that much. So you just purchase some nice molding and then you can just have it affixed on, and, you know, next to and abutting the molding you already have. And boy, does molding make a difference. Oh, it definitely does. I 100% agree with you on that. How about this idea in your bathroom is to add a ladder, uh, an old vintage ladder, and hang your towels on it and use it as a towel rack. I love that idea. Yeah, but now if I'm putting my towel on it, I probably want to clean it first. But you could put show towels on it. And then maybe yeah, nobody would true. use them. Yeah, you know, you could yeah. put your fautas on there or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could just be part of I love tour. the idea. I think it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, it just changes it up a little bit. I think that that is really fun. Um, moving on also in the molding department. This really will make a difference. And again, you know, you may have to have someone help you. But if you have cabinetry in your kitchen that doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling and you've got, so you've got some space. Now, whether or not it's far off the ceiling or close would determine the size that you would choose. But you could add crown molding to the top of that cabinetry Mm -hmm. and really make it look custom if it wasn't custom before. Or if you had molding, you had cabinets done you know, years ago, and you were going through your I'm putting baskets up there phase, and now you've taken your baskets down and you feel like it needs a little something. Well, maybe the answer is not different baskets, but adding some crown molding. And if your cabinetry goes close enough to the ceiling that you could put a piece of crown molding that would make it actually touch the ceiling, that's a great look. Oh, I think that's a fabulous idea. I don't think it's that hard to do. And speaking of cabinets, how about adding some under cabinet LED lighting? And if you don't want to deal with the wiring, you could, now they've got a battery operated LED light. So you could put some individual lights or a strip under there. And I think that's really an easy way to go. Yeah, I 
I mean, yes. Could I live without my undercounter lighting? Yes. Do I want to? No. I love under counter lighting. I think it just adds a whole nother dimension to your kitchen. I've talked to you guys before about the plug mold that I have under mine, as well as the lighting that I have under there. Mine is hardwired because I got to make these decisions as we were renovating. But they even have the, if you don't want to do the puck ones that Anita's talking about, you can even buy the long lighting that can you can get in various warm or cool, depending on what type of light that you want, and you can plug it in. So you don't even have to have the expense of having additional outlets put in. So maybe you plug it in and then you put a plant in front of it, or you put your toaster in front of it. So you don't see the plug, but then you have the benefit of the lighting and it's really not hard to install under your cabinets. Yeah. And how about some kick plates on the bottom of doors that get kicked with feet a lot? some brass plates or or even some of the kind of the silver tone ones. I think that's a nice look. I think it's a nice look too. And even if it, I mean, like, I don't know who's kicking doors that much. I don't really get that. I mean, I get like if you were like a cowboy and you're trying to kick the mud off or something like that, but like, who's doing that? I don't really know. Like I get the name. I play. think maybe five-year-olds. I don't know. Okay. Maybe like, let me, or you trap someone and trying to get out. I'm not sure. Yeah. Or yeah, anybody who's ever had an older brother. Oh, okay. See, I never had that. So that, yes, that was I, yeah. I was trapped in small spaces quite often. <laughs> so maybe you <laughs> could work in Peter's out. office with him. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know all about that. Trust me. <laughs> well, okay. That's for a different podcast. But um, yeah, I like the idea of that because it looks pretty. Just having a nice strip of brass on the bottom of your door. Like I'm thinking of painting the inside of my door black. The outside of it is black and I really love it. And I just thought maybe I'll paint the inside of it black and then put a really nice brass uh, kick plate on the inside. I just thought that would look really sharp. Oh, that sounds so pretty. I love that idea. Okay. I got to go. I'm going to do do that. (laughs) All right. Well, hold it. Just just wait a few minutes before you go. Okay. We're talking about painting. How about this? Painting brick. Yes. If you've got that red brick, that new red Mm -hmm. brick in your house somewhere, maybe it's a wall. Maybe it's Or your fireplace or something. Fireplace, more Mm -hmm. than likely, right? Paint it. You could do a schmear, which sounds more complicated than it is. Um, When really it's just schmearing. It's just schmearing. Uh, it's like you're putting on, you know, cream cheese on a bagel. Just schmear it around. It should be work fine. Uh, Or you could paint it and just make it solid painted without the smearing technique. I did that in our house in San Marino and whoa, what a difference that white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We painted our fireplace at an older house and I'm not sure we used uh, the kind of paint that's supposed to hold up to heat. So, but uh, you should probably do that. But I don't know that we even knew about that sort well, of thing. Well, we of course, young if you're getting anywhere no close to where the you know the fire it was in the front be. it wasn't in the firebox but yeah, yeah. Then, then in the firebox for sure you have to use the high but heat. you might just yeah you might just check into that it doesn't hurt to ask so right. that it's safe and you know you're doing right. it the right way and you know we're not experts on that so. <laughs> yeah sorry disclaimer and he's like don't email me if your house burns down <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know about this stuff mm-hmm. um another easy one if it isn't already going on in your house Make your switch plates match. And while you're at it, you know, as I always say, put them on dimmers. But if they don't match, um, eh, you know, you can change that for not too much money. I mean, some of them, they have, sometimes they're sort of that ecru color. Some are white. Maybe you'll find a black one somewhere. You know, those are, sometimes you can get those for like 39 cents, those little plastic white if you went, went with all white, would be the simplest way to go. Just change those up all around your house. I know I had to do that here. I mean, some of the electrical outlets were changed because they had to be up to code, but other ones were the older ones. And I just got, you know, purchased those, the old outlet covers with like the two round holes because they were beige and I wanted them to be all white. So that made a big difference. Oh, definitely. And I've changed out the, the outlet, um, the outlets in my walls from the off white to white in a previous house and such a huge difference. It really made a big difference. And this is coming up again because it fits this category, but we've talked about it last time, painting your backsplash. If you do not like the look of it, you can paint it. Oh yeah. Wow. Those ladies did some job, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they sure did. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think that costs a lot of money. It just costs some time. An effort, but 
definitely under a hundred bucks buying some paint and going for it. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quinn's. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. So we're going to talk about um, something... Anita's crushing on now because we're loving this, doing this new, ep- uh, you know, segment of the episodes. So yeah, what do you so, have for us today? Well, my favorite find today is the cauliflower pizza crust at Trader Joe's. And you might be able to find these other places, but the thing I like about it is that it's it's mostly cauliflower. It has some other stuff in there, but it's gluten free. But also, it just doesn't. It's mostly cauliflower. So it's, it's uh, more paleo, I guess it doesn't have, it might have a little bit of flour in it, but not much, but I love using that. And you can kind of, uh, you cook the, the crust first and then you put your toppings on. So it's kind of fun, better, I think, than buying the cauliflower pizza already made up because you can put whatever you want on top. And it's kind of a fun family thing on the weekends that we just kind of, uh, you know, have fun with the toppings and do it as a family. So that's my, that was oh, wow. my I wonder if you find. could grill that one too. Uh, I don't know about that one. That makes me a little nervous. I because we've I'm grilled the other Trader Joe's, like the regular pizza, right? But this is dough. is not as firm as mm-hmm. a regular pizza crust. It's a little softer, so I would be a little nervous about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm really have been trying to be gluten free, and it's ha- it's it's not as hard as I thought it would be. But I mean, you definitely have to think about it. But I think it's really making me feel better. And I never thought of myself as a person who had any gluten intolerance. So that's a good tip. I'm happy to hear about that. It's something else that I could try. And we have a question today mm-hmm. from Margo. First of all, Margo, I love that name. Margo, I do great too. name. Mm-hmm. Margo A. This is a very good question. Margo, as they all are, but this is very good because it's trending to have more color in your home now. And Mm -hmm. Margaret's picking up on that. But she's asking, what do you do when you have an open concept home when the trend is for more color? How do you add it in an open concept room or home, I should say? 
Well, I think you have to look at the whole room, Margot, as a whole. Uh, you can't look at each little section separately. You've got to consider it uh, as one big room. So if you're adding color, let's say you wanted to add the color blue to your room. You can't just do it in one corner. You're going to need to space it out here and there throughout every part of that room uh, because it does have to be treated as a whole. So you don't want one section to be blue, another to be green, another to be red. It's going to feel funny. So whatever you do, or if you use two colors, I would just say evenly disperse it. You don't want the room to feel like, wait a minute, when I turn this direction, it's blue and yellow. But when I turn the other one, it's red and white. I mean, you want it to feel like it's cohesive and all a uh, part of one room. And I think that's a great thing to do and add it, you know, with uh, accents like we talk about. You can add it with pillows, throws, uh, some accessories, possibly some plants, some flowers. Um, yeah. So uh, books, maybe some maybe some dishes on the wall. Yeah, I think it's definitely doable. And I appreciate the fact that Margo's thinking probably like, oh, if I wanted to add more color to the wall, you know, how could I do that? I want to add more color to the whole space. We touched on that a little bit a um, few episodes ago, and it is really difficult to add color in areas of a wall in an open concept, unless there's some delineation. And I mentioned how I created some delineation by dropping a, what would have been considered a horizontal chair rail, but I dropped it on the vertical on the wall to sort of delineate my dining area from the rest of my open concept house when I had an open concept house. And that worked in that particular house. So you would really mm -hmm. have to see you know, where your walls end and all that if you were talking about wall color. But I think that if that is not possible, and it, probably the best route is just to go one wall color, bring the color in in rugs, Bring it in even in drapery. So you can bring it in in these in bigger places than just, you know, a pillow or an accessory. At, but exactly what Anita is saying, you need to create the flow. So we we were always suggesting a limited color palette. So maybe you have one or two pop colors that you want to bring around. Bring them all the way around. But don't be afraid uh, to, um, you know, dive in all the way and use some bigger elements like drapes or or big rug, if that's where you're feeling, or a big tablecloth or, or you know, a runner and other accessories like that that are going to take up a little bit more real estate. So therefore adding even more color. I love the rug idea. I think that's a great idea. The curtains, these are all fabulous ways to bring in color to the room. So that's, those are great, great suggestions, Kelly. Thank you, Anita. Thank yes. you. And thank you, Margo, for your question. Awesome. Yes. Anything else? We're good. All righty. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you have any tips to share with us, or if you have any questions you'd like us to answer for you, please email us at decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.